Today, we're going to continue our discussion about music during the medieval period. And we will look at a specific example of a Gregorian chant. But let's just refresh our memory regarding the musical fabric from this period. As we know, in modern times we use scales. We have the major scale and the minor scale. But during the medieval period, they used modes. They used modes such as the Ionian mode, the Dorian mode, the Phrygian mode. These modes formed the pitch selection of the music of the medieval period. And in fact, they were used both in the religious and the secular music of this time. But let us continue our discussion about Gregorian chant. As we know, these originated around uh, the year 600 AD, and we have chants ranging up until about the year 1300. These chants still survive, they have been written down. We have some of the medieval manuscripts with their old notation. Today we're going to look at a, a specific example called Vidimus Stellum. This is one of the Gregorian chants. It was a setting for the Mass, for the Epiphany. And we're going to look at some of the techniques used in this Mass. One of these techniques is called melisma. What this means is that several notes, sometimes many notes, are used on one syllable. Let's listen again from the beginning of the piece. Listen to the syllable Ia on the Hallelujah. As you can hear, sometimes the same syllable is set to many different notes. Da, 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 e this is called melisma. The music itself, as we discussed during the first lecture, is known as monophonic music. It involves one voice. It was only later that they started to set music for several voices. But this is the traditional music of the Catholic Church, the Gregorian chant, and it was valued for its simplicity, for its ability to inspire reflection and piety. Let us look at the, the breakdown of this particular Mass from the Epiphany. It consists of three sections. Let's listen to it again in its entirety. This is where the choir sings. In the middle of this ABA form, there is a biblical verse which has been set to music. So you've got the, the section which is just Alleluia. Then you have section B, the biblical verse in the middle. And then you have again section A which is Alleluia. As you can hear, now there is a solo voice singing the Alleluia phrase. Now in Latin, the solo voices, they are several, they sing in Latin, Vidimus Stellum, we have seen his star. Video in Latin is to see, like we have videos, Vidimus we have seen, and Stella is a star. So then in the plural form it becomes Stellum, Vidimus Stellum, we have, see, we have seen his star in the east.
And then we have the return of the Alleluia phrase. So this, as you can hear, is in ABA form. It is a cappella, it is unaccompanied. This is how Gregorian chant was sung. Often we don't actually know specifically who composed these Gregorian chants. They were, we don't even know who wrote them down. As we, as, a, as we mentioned, during the period from AD 600 until 1300, thousands of these Gregorian chants were written down and recorded. So this is a beautiful example of Gregorian chant. Let us discuss a little bit more about the difference between the medieval modes that we had the Ionian mode, the Dorian mode, the Phrygian mode, the Lydian mode, Mixolydian, Aeolian and Locrian. What this means is if we take all the notes in a scale, let's say for instance from C to C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, this is the Ionian mode. Then if we start on D, and we go D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. This is known as the Dorian mode. And so we proceed, starting and ending on E, this is the Phrygian mode. Starting and ending on F, this is known as the Lydian mode. Starting and ending on G, this is known as the Mixolydian mode. Starting and ending on A is known as the Aeolian mode. Now let us take notes with our modern scale system, only two of these modes have survived. The Aeolian mode is now our modern minor mode, and the Ionian mode, starting on C and ending on C, this is now our major mode. However, as, you, as we know, it is possible to have a major mode starting on any one of the notes of the diatonic scale. We can have C major, E flat major, but what is important is the sequence of whole tones and semitones. As we know, in the Ionian mode, there is a semitone between the third and fourth and seventh and eighth degrees of the scale. As long as that sequence is preserved, you can have an Ionian, or as we call it these days, major mode, starting in any note, likewise with the Aeolian, which is the minor mode. Of course, there is a subtle difference. The Aeolian is the natural minor mode. We are accustomed to using the harmonic minor mode and the melodic minor mode. In other words, with the harmonic minor mode, we would raise the seventh degree. So let's say we have an A minor, it would be a G sharp. Whereas if we were to use the melodic mode, we would raise both the sixth and the seventh degree is ascending, so we would have F sharp and G sharp ascending. And as you know, these are then naturalized when we descend to become an F natural and G natural. That's the only real difference. So we no longer use the other modes in classical music. Jazz still preserves many of these modes. So this gives us a bit of a synopsis of the pitch selection, the modes which were used for medieval music, both for religious music and for secular music during the medieval period. As we know, Gregorian chant, as we mentioned, was not actually invented by Pope Gregory. It was named after him because the legend was that he invented it, but it actually evolved, as we see, over hundreds of years. It was a very ancient style of singing, an ancient tradition, the music is extremely beautiful, beautiful and reflective. It's actually quite amazing how such a simple fabric, a single voice or, or a single melodic line sung by many voices can be so soothing. Alleluia. So to summarize, Gregorian chant had unique qualities which gave it its otherworldly feeling. As we said, it had a flexible rhythm, it had no distinct meter, 
This gave it a floating quality and inspired a sense of uh, contemplation, of thinking about spiritual things. The notes tended to move by step, so it was a melody which wove itself in, uh, smoothly. It inspired a sense of meditation. These beautiful tunes were passed down for many centuries orally. They weren't written down. Eventually they were notated in magnificent illuminated manuscripts like the one you can see on the screen. And to this day many of these beautiful tunes have been preserved and so we continue to enjoy the Gregorian chants from this period and they continue to inspire us. Hallelujah. 